نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقه قولی و جعن لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم الہمنا رشتن و عزن من شرور انفسنا اللہم ارن الحق حقا و رزقنا اتباع اللہم ارن الباطل باطلا و رزقنا اجتنابا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Today we will be discussing the verse number six, uh, 36 of Surah An-Nisa. I would want to repeat what I have told already in our discussion of Surah An-Nisa that in this surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the laws, the orders, the commandments regarding four different circles and four different levels. The first circle being the most inner circle, that is a Muslim house. And after that comes the orders for the Muslim society or an Islamic community. And following this will be the rules, the regulations and the laws for a Muslim state. And then Finally, the rules and regulations and orders of Allah for the Islamic Ummah that is at an international level. Starting from the verse number 1 till the verse 35, we have received and we have discussed about the orders which Allah has given for a Muslim house in a detail. Now starting from verse number 36 are the orders for a Muslim community. The orders pertaining to the individual who when he comes out and who when he walks out from his house and he, he interacts with the society, with the fellow beings of his community how is he supposed to relate his behavior his dealings his ethics his mannerism and and what is and how is he supposed to relate with all the people around him from verse number 36 onwards for the next few verses we will be discussing about all this what is and how it has to go about in a Muslim society. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيَّا شَيَّا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْجَارِ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ مُخْتَالًا فَخُورًا وَاحْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْعًا This part of the words number 36 has a do and a don't of Allah. The do is wa'budullah and the don't is wala tushriku bihi shay'a. Wa'budullah wala tushriku bihi shay'a. Wa bil walidayni ihsana. Allah is now ordering وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Do good to your parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in one verse or one surah, but in multiple verses and multiple surah of Quran, gives the rights of parents 
immediately after explaining and ordering his own rights. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 83, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the covenant which was taken with the people of Bani Israel, the Ten Commandments of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَ مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا Allah's right, لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Do not worship anyone other than Allah. And then after, after Allah's right, Allah gives the orders, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا That do good to your parents. Then here in Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-An'am, Surah Bani Israel, Surah Luqman, and likewise so many other places in Quran where Allah is explaining immediately after his right, the rights of the parents, the mother and the father. Why is it so? You know, Allah is the creator, but the children the creator created through the portal of the parents allah is the sustainer but he he gets the sustenance to the children through the parents he is the provider but the provisions reach the children through the parents so there you are after the creator comes the source or the root of creation after the sustainer comes the rights of those through whom he gives the sources of sustenance and after the provider are the rights of those through which the children are going to get the provision that is why after allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right comes the right of the parents and wherever you see allah always mentions wa bil walidaini ihsana and we can, we can remember and put it down that nothing short of Ihsan will do with parents. And Ihsan is what? That when somebody just performs more than the obligatory duties, when somebody just gives the next person more than actually was his right, due right, and when somebody just does something to please Allah, then this is Ihsan. And this is how we need to be merciful and kind to our parents in the manner of Ihsan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in summary narrated the mannerism for the children Surah Bani Israel, verse number 23, Allah says, وَقَزَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِخْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنْ عِنْدَ قَلْكِبْرَ عِهْدَهُمَا أَوْ قَلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا قَرِيمًا Allah says, that Allah has ordered that worship none but Allah. Do good to your parents and should one or both attain old age, then never even say or do not scold them and always speak to them respectfully. So this is like a summary for the way Allah wants children to behave with the parents. Now from here onwards, I will be narrating like almost up to 20 ahadiths to clarify, to magnify, to highlight and to make it crystal clear as to what the right of our parents are on all of us. Hazrat Abu Huraira and who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that a person asked the Prophet وسلم, Man that a Prophet وسلم, who among my fellow people uh, has the most right on me for my kindness, for my service and for my mercy. 
Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ummuka, your mother, your mom. He then asked, Summaman, then whom? Whom after that? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam again said, Ummuka, Summa Ummuka, again your mother. The second right is also for the mother. And then the person again asked, Summaman, then whom? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for the third time said, Summa Ummuka, again, the third right again for your mother. Then when the fourth time he asked Summa Man, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Summa Abuka, then your father. So there you are. Mother has the greatest right and mother's rights are three times more as compared to the father. And Allah explains the reason for that also in Surah Al-Qaf, ayah number 15. Allah says, Hamalathu ummuhu qarhan wa waza'athu qarhan wa hamaluhu wa fathaluhu salathuna shahra. In pain did his mother bear him, and in pain did she give birth to him, and her bearing him, and her bearing him, and her lactating him took 30 months. So the pain and the difficulties and the hardships of the pregnancy, the labor pains which she has to bear with during the delivery, and the lactation period which is which has been obligatory obligately made for all the Muslim women it is what it is two years so these three things which the mother does and the father does not makes her right three times more as compared to the father but the father's right we all daughters we love our fathers we really immensely and from the core of the heart we love our fathers and just imagine Hazrat Imran, Hazrat Amr ibn Las radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Thurimzi that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Rizaullahi fi rizaul walid, sukhtullahi fi sukhtul walid. Player, player of the, player of the father is the player of Allah and displayer of the father is the displayer of Allah. If father is happy and if the father is pleased, Allah will be pleased. And the father is displeased, Allah will be displeased. Similarly, in other hadiths, Prophet said, Your father is the gate to your paradise. You may take it or you may leave it. And this was the condition narrated by the Prophet. And then there was a father. There was a there was a man who came to the Prophet and he complained about his mother. He said that my mother is very ill-mannered. Prophet said, in fact, he asked him, was she ill-mannered even then when you, you were a tiny fetus in her womb and you were clinging to her womb during her pregnancy? He insisted and he said, Prophet you don't know. My, my mother is really very harsh-hearted and she's very short-tempered. Prophet then again asked, was she short-tempered even when she used to when she used to hold you close to her throughout the night and when she used to nurse you throughout the night was she even then she was ill-mannered then he very aggressively said the prophet i have i have repaid for all what she did for me prophet said what have you done he said he said that i carried her on my shoulders and i helped her perform her hajj Oh, my sisters, my my daughters, we, we even haven't done all this. And for the person who said that who had done all this, Prophet Wasallam told him, you have not, you have not even repaid for the pains she bore when she gave birth to you. So this, this is the right of the mother. It cannot be repaid. It cannot be repaid. And that is what we need to be sensitive about. Hazrat Abu Amama radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu was asked by one of his companions that what is the right of my parents? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Huma jannatuka wa naruka. That both of them, your father as well as your mother, Huma, both of them, they are your paradise or they are your hell. Meaning that your behavior, your relationship, your conduct, your dealings with your parents is going to determine 
whether you're going to be amongst the people of the paradise or amongst the residents of hellfire huma janna tuka wa naruka in bukhari a sahi hadith narrates that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked ayyul amalu ahabbu ila allah which out of the deeds is most most liked by allah and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told in response to this question as salatu ala waqtiha as salatu ala waqtiha prayers or salah at the proper time birrum bil walidain kindness mercy good behavior with the parents al jihad fi sabil allah and jihad in the path of allah it is reported in a sahih hadith that hazrat jaima radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that a person came and he asked the permission to do jihad in the path of allah from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him is your mother alive he said yes prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said farji'i ilayha fa inna al-jannata 'inda rijliha you return towards your mother because there's absolutely no doubt that your janna your paradise lies under the soles of her feet similarly hazrat amar ibn al-as radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports hazrat abu said qudri radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in abu daud and musnad ahmad that hazrat amar ibn al-as radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu came over to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and asked him that i i want to gather i want to do some deed I want to do something so that I may be rewarded by the reward of a person migrating and of a person doing jihad. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him, "Are your parents alive?" He said, "Yes." Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him to return to his parents. Then there was a person who asked permission from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to join jihad and to migrate. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him to go and get permission from his parents first. so this is the merit and this is the standard which allah in quran and hadith is giving to the parents hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in muslim that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting and then he said rahima anfuhu rahima anfuhu rahima anfuhu that is he repeated this term three times and in arabic it is a way of saying that is prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying may he be humiliated may he be humiliated may he be disgraced he repeated this repeated this word thrice the companions asked who are you saying that about prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever whoever finds his parents in a condition of weakness the parents are weak and they are old and he does not and to paradise or he does not earn paradise by being kind and merciful to them similarly in another sahih hadith prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said and informed about three major sins and the three major sins reported are al ishraqu billah polytheism finding partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aqukum bil walidain being disobedient to the parents qawl az-zur qawl az-zur shahadat az-zur talking about a lie telling lies telling lies or giving a false witness similarly in another hadith sahih hadith The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has highlighted five forbidden five forbidden and haram deeds. These forbidden deeds are number 1 al-ishraqu billah polytheism that is finding partners with Allah. You realize the first right is always Quran and hadith. The first right on the bondsman is always been explained as a right of Allah. And the first right of Allah is to believe in the oneness of Allah the second forbidden deed is to irritate and to disobey the mothers 
to make them upset, to irritate them, to make them upset and to disobey them, and to make non-productive and useless conversation, burying of the live daughters, and lust for money, love of money, lust of money, desire of the worldly riches. So these are the five forbidden deeds as explained by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then in another Sahih Hadith, it is reported that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, he, he took three steps and on each step, he kept on saying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. The companion asked, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we've not heard anybody praying. We didn't hear anybody supplicating to Allah. Then on either were you supplicating. So on for what are you saying the words of Amin? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Hazrat Jibrail alayhi salam was cursing three people. He was imagine the leader of the angels was cursing three people and I said Amin to the curse, to the supplication of curse of Hazrat Jibrail alayhi salam. I would repeat again. The leader of the angels is cursing three people and the leader of the prophets is saying Amin to the supplication of curse. Aren't we sure that this supplication would be heard and the three people were whom? Number one, a person who, who listens to the name of the Prophet وسلم, and he does not recite the Darud. Allahumma la taja'alna minhum. Allah do not make us one of those. And the second person who finds either his mother or his father or both in a state that they are old and they are weak and they are sick. And he does not, out of his kindness and out of his mercy to them, he does not earn paradise. And the third is a person who finds the month of Ramadan and does not work hard to get and to gather the blessings and the Rahmah of this month. Then Prophet Wasallam said in a Sahih Hadith that there are going to be Three people, three ill-fated people whose, whose supplications will not be heard, will not be answered. These three people are who? Number one is the person who is habitual to drinking. That is alcoholism. The second is the person who is used to what? Riba, usury. And the third person is the person who is disobedient to the parents. And similarly, there are two more hadiths which are very similar to them. The Prophet ﷺ said that there are four people regarding whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken responsibility himself that he himself would not let them enter paradise. Now just imagine, will they be able to enter when Allah himself has taken the duty and the responsibility that he will see to it and he will make sure that they won't enter paradise. And similarly, in other, in other hadith, the words are that there are going to be four people on the day of resurrection who will not even smell the scent of the heaven. So these four people in both the hadith are same. The first person who is habitual to alcohol, the second person who is in his monetary dealings taking riba, and the third is a person who is disobedient to the parents. And the fourth is a person here in these two, other than the first of these which we talked before, the fourth person is a person who consumes the inheritance or the property of the orphans. Astaghfirullah Rabbi. Similarly, Allah says, a Prophet says that there are some sins for whom Allah gives a punishment in the world 
and there are some sins whose punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he he postpones it to the hereafter but then the Prophet said there is one sin for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he will give punishment for the sin in this worldly life also and that is what to be disobedient and to be to be harsh to the parents Hazrat Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in a hadith that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said obey your parents and be kind to them obey your parents and be kind to them your children will be kind and obedient to you so this is it if we are disobedient allah will punish us that our own children will be disobedient and if we are not kind we are harsh then allah will punish us that our own children will not be kind and they will be harsh so that is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i repeat again obey your parents and be kind to them your children will be kind and obedient to you live with purity and your wives will stay pure and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned warned in a hadith that there is an evil deed there is a sin that if person commits that sin then with that no no good deeds will be useful that is they will all go waste and that one evil deed is what not to be paying the rights of the parents duly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand the rights of our parents and help us all be dutiful and kind and merciful to our parents hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrated and he said that he said that once he was sleeping and in in a dream he found himself in the paradise you know that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophets when they were they they used to see something in a dream the dream of the prophet was also considered as a revolution so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that i found myself in paradise and i heard someone reciting the quran there where prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in the paradise he heard somebody who was reciting the quran there and i asked who is he who is reciting the quran and i was told that it was whom it was haris is what haris bin Nu'man radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says this is how this is how piety is this is how piety is serving and obedience to person to parents is such so hazrat harith bin numan's voice was heard by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the paradise so remember the children who are obedient and who are kind and nice and merciful to the parents their supplications will be heard will be answered and their supplications will reach the throne of Allah azza wa jal Haris bin Numan was one of like the most obedient sons of his mother in Medina he used to he used to clean and wash the hair of his mother he used to comb her hair he used to oil her hair he used to wash her clothes he used to cook for her and then he used to feed her he used to he never used to leave all these jobs for his wife to do he used to do it actually himself and look what great and what ranks he achieved similarly it is narrated by abdullah bin umar radhiyallahu ta'ala and who in the rimzi that messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a person came and he asked that i have committed deadly major sins in my life can my repentance be accepted prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him is your mother alive is your mother alive was a question asked to a person who was repenting and who was desirous that his sins be forgiven he said no she's dead 
Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, Is there a sister of your mother? He said, Yes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Then treat her kindly. Whom? His maternal aunt. Treat her kindly and well. Allah will accept your repentance. So this is it. The mother, the father, are a cause, are a source, their service, kindness to them, mercy to them, good behaviors to them. This is all going to be a reason and a cause for the acceptance of our supplications, for the acceptance and for the, for the forgiveness of our sins. You must have gone through the story Prophet ﷺ has narrated in Bukhari. And I remember having gone through the study when I was like in class 3 or 4 in, in a book of my school that Prophet ﷺ related the story of three men who were the travelers, three men of Bani Israel and they were traveling and then there was thunder and there was rainstorm and they hid in a cave. They took shelter in the cave but what happened unfortunately was that a big stone came and the cave got closed. And when the rain and the thunderstorm was over, they wanted to get out of the cave and they started pushing and they started using all their force. But the stone won't budge an inch. And then they decided to remember one of their good deeds they had in their life. And with reference to that deed, they would ask and they would beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their dua and let the stone move. <coughs> So the, one of them came and he said that, you know, that I have always um, had lawful earnings. And one of them said that, Allah, you know, that there was a rich and a beautiful lady who invited me to commit adultery. But I said that I fear Allah. That is, he mentioned his chastity and his mod modesty and the fear of Allah. And then the third one, he said that, Allah, you know, that I have old parents and i have goats and when when i took them when i take them out for grazing and all when i come back in the evening i milk them and i give milk first of all as a preference i give them to my parents and then i feed my children and then he mentioned a specific day then the day when he had gone out to take taken his goat and then he was he got late and got dark and then when he came back and he milked his goat and he brought the milk but because of getting late the parents had gone off to sleep empty stomach and he said that Allah you know that I with that with that utensil or with that glass of milk in my hand I stood at the head end throughout the night I stood with that pot of milk at the head end of their bed throughout the night waiting that they might get up and I give them the milk. And then he also said, Allah, you know that my children kept on crying, but I could not just, I could just not think and imagine that I, I feed my children and my children fill their tummies and they go to sleep and my parents sleep hungry. And then when he prayed after this, the stone moved. So we want to remove the hardships. We want to remove the trials. We want our supplications to be heard and to be answered. We want our repentances to be accepted. We want our sins to be forgiven. Then it is our parents who are the root to get all this done. And you know, Parents, when, when they just pray out of love and when they pay out of obligation, that is that when the children are being obedient and they are serving their parents and looking after their parents and the mother or the father out of the mere pleasure of the service of the children, out of the mere pleasure, the supplication which come out from their hearts. Remember, it would change the fate of the children. It would change the fate of the children. I would want to repeat the story of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that who will be my neighbor in Jannah? 
and Allah told him of a person who was who had a shop and he used to sell meat the whole day. Hazrat Musa searched and he came over to the shop and he waited there and when the whole day was over he was over with his job he closed his shop he took a little bit of meat and then he went to his house and there was an old lady who was lying on the bed he came and he greeted her and he kissed her on her forehead and then he put the meat for cooking and then he went to sit with her on her bed and he was entertaining her and when the food was cooked he gently lifted her up and he made her recline on his shoulder and then he took morsels and kept on feeding her very kindly lovingly looking towards her Hazrat Musa was sure that he has been given these ranks in the paradise just because he's he's serving his mother and he's being so kind and he's been so loving and so very merciful to his old mother and when he got over with the feeding and everything and he came over to Hazrat Musa Hazrat Musa was trying to confirm and he asked that who is this lady he said he is my mother so there he was as the Musa thought that what I had an idea I was right but then as the Musa asked him that to my brother I was noticing and I was observing that when you were picking her up and when you were putting her down and when you were feeding her throughout the process I, I was seeing that she was mumbling something and I couldn't hear what was she saying as the Musa asked him and he he was slightly humble and he wouldn't answer but Hazrat Musa kept on insisting that you must tell me what was she saying and then the son came up and he said that you know whenever I I look after my mom and whenever I serve her and wherever I'm kind to her whenever I feed her she always gives she always raises her hand and she always prays for me that may Allah that may Allah bless you with the neighborhood of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam this is it may Allah make us worthy of this level and may Allah make us obedient children serving our parents being kind and nice and loving to our parents being protective to our parents and may Allah make us all worthy of the prayers deserving of the prayers of our mothers and of our fathers I can keep on going I can keep on narrating the ayah and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding the rights of the parents but I think we'd stop here and I think we would now I would want you to all understand and relate that we need to know that when Allah is explaining the rights of parents and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is emphasizing the rights and highlighting the rights of parents we need to know who around us are coming in this relationship who are our parents our mother and the father then that is our actual mother and the father then our maternal or paternal grandparents and then obviously great grandparents and then our mother-in-law and father-in-law also come up in the same category there is a Hassan hadith which is reported by the Prophet ﷺ. it is in the books other than the six books of a hadith but it is a Hassan hadith that Prophet ﷺ talked to one of his companions and said you have three fathers one is your real father one is your wife's father and third is the teacher who taught you so for a husband the wives the wife's father and the mother and for the wife the husband's father and the mother also come up to the level of her own or his own father and the mother I always say and I always believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been very kind and gracious before marriage if we had two feet under under which our paradise was and we had one door to Jannah our father then after marriage these are going to multiply by two lucky is the one who avails and unlucky and ill fate is the one who stays deprived and very pathetically very poorly pathetically I I hear 
some scholars saying that for her or her parents and for him or his parents. And I hear women saying very proudly, my parents are for me, my mom, my dad for me and your dad and your mom for you. Really dividing parents? Do you divide the bounties and the blessings of Allah? No. Then how come we're dividing our parents? And people very, very aggressively come up and say there is Islam in Quran. It is not. The woman is not supposed to look after the in-laws. There's no concept. Really? How can we deprive ourselves of all these bounties, of all these rewards? Now, the next thing which I would definitely want to sum up and to highlight that obviously feeling the rights of the parents very clearly now, how are we supposed to behave and relate to our mannerism? I'll be going point wise. Number one, respect and regard. We need to respect them. We need to regard Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who saw a young man with an old man and he asked the old man that is he your father and then he gave three pieces of advice. He said, look, never call him by his name. Never walk in front of him and let him have a seat before you. This is what? This is an advice of respect for the parents. The second point, humbleness and being humane in front of the parents. Allah says in Quran, Wahfiz lahuma junahadhulli min ar rahma. Lower down, lower down your shoulders even in front of your parents in respect. Don't stand arrogantly. Don't talk arrogantly. Be humbled. And, and I'll ask all of you, how, how can children be arrogant in front of their parents? How can we proud in front of our parents what we are, what we are today, where we are today, what we have achieved, gained, whatever we've reached in our lives is obviously, obviously no doubt because of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then... Allah with his blessings had made it all possible for us because of the struggle, the effort, the help, the guidance, the love and the support of our dear parents. So how can we think about being arrogant in front of them? I just narrated about Hazrat Haris bin Noman. He was so humble, he used to lower down his gaze. And he used to lower down his head and he used to cross his hands and fold his arms and he never used to speak aloud. His mom was old, she was weak, she used to like mumble in his mouth and there were many times he couldn't understand what she was mumbling but he never used to shout at her, he never used to call her bad words. Oh mom, speak loud, oh mom. Why are you mumbling? No. She, he just used to keep quiet and he used to go out and then going in the courtyard, he used to ask his wife, what was mom saying? So we need to be humble. The third point, patience and tolerance. Allah says in verse number 23 of Surah Bani Israel, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ فَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Don't even say ah and don't scold them. They are old. They are weak. They'll forget at times. They can't hear. They can't speak. They can't express. They cannot walk. They cannot remember. The food might spill. They might spill water. They might just become like little children. But just remember how, how tolerant they were when we were children. When we forgot, 
when we could not speak, when we could not walk, and when we used to spill, when we could not remember how they used to hold our finger and make us learn how to walk, how they hurt, how they got hold of my hand and taught me how to write. So remember how tolerant they were to us when we were children. And also think back how tolerant we are to our own children. So stay patient, stay cool and be tolerant. The fourth point, I'm going point wise. I won't want any one of us to miss any one of these points. We're not going to get away with this. The fourth point, be kind and merciful and soft and polite to them. The way we talk, the way you talk to them, the way you lift them up, the way you feed them, the way you look at them, the way you deal with them, they are, they are weak, they are sick. Their bodies are already hurting and aching. Don't jerk them. Don't give them jolting. They are dependent on you. Be soft, be polite, be merciful and be very, very kind. Allah is not kind to them who is not kind. Allah will not be merciful on them who is not, who not merciful. Number five, look after their requirements, their needs, and care for their feelings and their desires and try to fulfill their wishes. They fulfilled our wishes. They, they completed our requirements. They were sensitive about our desires. Hazrat Imam Zainul Abidin, he was Hassan bin Ali. He had a mother who was widowed and she was old and she was sick and she was weak and she was also semi-blind. And you know what the son used to do? All the way from his workplace, he used to walk back to his house to have lunch with his mother. And there were two or three days when one of his friends accompanied him. And the friends, he observed that Imam Zainul Abdeen used to wait for his mother to eat. And when she used to finish or when she used to stop eating, then only he used to eat. And the friend asked him, I don't understand. You come all the way walking back, rushing, hurrying that I want to go and have lunch with my mother. And when you come here, you don't eat with her. And you let her eat and then you eat. Imam Zainul Abidin said, my friends, why must it be so hard for you to understand and comprehend? The matter is that I don't eat with her simply because I'm afraid that I might take a piece of meat which she likes. And so I let her eat first and then I eat the remaining food afterwards. Sixth, serve them. Do service to them. Attend to them. Like, like the leader of the women of Jannah, Hazrat Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, served her father. She used to wash his clothes. She used to wash his hair. She used to comb them. She used to oil them. And then Hazrat Awais Karani uh, rahmatullah alayhi, he was a tabi. He was not awarded the level of Sahaba Ikram, although he embraced Islam in the life of the Prophet Wasallam, But he could not come to meet and to be in the company of the Prophet Wasallam. So that is why he is, he was not a Sahaba and he was not amongst the companions of the Prophet Wasallam. And despite accepting Islam, he just did not come and visit the Prophet ﷺ for the mere, mere reason that he was busy looking after his old debilitated mom. And you know what? He even performed Hajj after the death of his mother. But he has been given the, the name of Khairu Tabain, the best of Tabain. 
Okay, now the seventh point. Take out time for them. Take out time for your parents. You don't know. Believe you me. Believe you me. You just don't know how much time is left. And you don't know how soon they will depart and how quickly they will depart. Then leaving you behind, regretting and remembering the days when you could give them time. Give them time. Give them time and attention when you have time and when you have your parents. Prophet has promised in a Sahih Hadith that when any one of you, when any one of you lovingly looks at the face of her mother, of his or her mother, then all your sins will be forgiven. And in another hadith, the Prophet says, then he will be he will be awarded with the reward of a Hajj-e Mabarur. The person who is who is lovingly glancing or looking at the face of his or her mother, then the person will be rewarded by the reward of a Hajj-e Mabrur. Sitting at your home and looking at your mother or mother-in-law, you know that is the difficult part of the story. You will be rewarded by Hajj-e Mabrur. Prophet said this and the companions asked, what if we look again? <coughs> Prophet said you will be rewarded with another reward again. And then another Sahih Hadith Prophet said that when children sit with their old parents to entertain them, then before they get up, all their sins will be forgiven. So give them time, give them attention, talk to them. And then, then I would, I would urge you, I would request you to express, to express your love, to talk about how, how much you love them, how much you care for them, how important they are for you. Demonstrate your love, exhibit your love, kiss them, kiss them. Kiss them on the forehead, kiss them on their hands, hug them, sit with them, lie down with your mom, express your love. Remember they used to hold you close? Remember the way they used to cuddle you? Remember the way they used to kiss you and hug you? They need this now. They need this now. They do not need the service of your maid servants or your men servants or your male nurses or your female nurses you brought with your money or you've hired with your money for their service and looking after. No, they want your hands. They want your, your body to be cuddled with. These old parents are like children. And then the eighth point of exhibiting your love and the best thing the ninth point is pray for them pray for them as much as you can in the verse number 24 of surah bani israel allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us the prayer as well Qul, say rabbirham huma kama rabbayani sahira oh allah be kind to them the way that they were kind to me when I was a child, when I needed their kindness, when I couldn't eat, when I couldn't sleep, when I couldn't read, when I couldn't walk, when I could understand, when I couldn't just survive without their kindness and they were kind to me, be kind to them. Remember this, remember this dua of the Quran and keep it in the tashahud of your salah. That is before you say salam. In the last part of your tashahud, keep it in your salah. May your parents be alive and may, may have they passed on. It is a beautiful, it is a beautiful supplication which we can all make for our parents. And then 
we all need to relate to the rights of the parents even after the death of the parents one of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him the issue that his parents had passed off and what right does what right do they still hold on him hazrat abu usaid saadi radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah that the Prophet ﷺ was sitting with his companions and a person came and he was from the tribe of Banu Salma the messenger says uh, the narrator says and he said that oh messenger of Allah ﷺ are there some rights of my parents on me which I have to fulfill even after they have died that is my parents have died okay i was sensitive enough that i was i i was duty bound and it was obligatory for me to sensitively pay their rights as long as they were alive but now that they have passed away and they have died are there still some rights of my parents which i have to fulfill these were the people who were sensitive extremely sensitive about the rights of their fellow beings prophet salawatsam say he told him three rights he said pray for mercy and forgiveness on their behalf the first right of the parents who are deceased is to pray for their mercy and forgiveness second to fulfill to fulfill the rightful will or the bequest they may have made we talked about it in the orders of inheritance that it is allowed to make will or bequest of one's one third of the property so if parents have made a rightful or a righteous will then it is the duty of the par- children after the departing of the parents or after the death of the parents that they fulfill that will or the bequest they made and to pay due regards to the relations of kin and third to be and fourth to be respectful to their friends so these are the four points prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said i i'm sorry i said three previously there are four things to pray for them to uh, complete or fulfill their righteous will and to be nice and generous and kind to the relations to their relations of the kin and to be respectful to the friends and then being praying for the parents what is the merit of praying for the deceased parents hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala and who lets us know a very big promise of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it is a very big hope for all the children as well hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in a sahih hadith that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that it happens sometime that the parents of a person or one of them dies and he has been disobedient to the parents you know parents are those around us whose rights we cannot repay we just cannot repay and humans are but to err and there are so so many chances that we might have been disobedient to them so we all very intensely need to listen to this that there one of the parents has has died and he has been disobedient to them in their lifetime and hence incurred their displeasure but after their death if this child was obe- disobedient after their death if he prays to allah with a sincere heart to have mercy on them and to forgive them their sins then allah will thereupon declare the disobedient child as an obedient child allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand comprehend relate remember and dutifully pay all the rights of our living or our deceased parents allah forgive our shortcomings forgive the shortfalls forgive all which we wronged forgive all we said wrong forgive when we hurted them forgive when we were rude to them forgive when we displeased them forgive 
when we were disrespectful to them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us humbled in front of them make us respectful make us obedient make us kind make us merciful let us spend our time let us spend our time on them help us give give them love guide us to show our affection Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all the children among the children who, who can serve their who can serve their parents kindly politely gently help us look after their requirements guide us guide us to fulfill their wishes Allah help us be patient and be tolerant Allah help us respect them and regard them Allah make us one of them who 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 very who continuously be praying for our parents and accept all our prayers for our parents and accept all their prayers for us and make us worthy of their prayers I would end my talk by the words let's learn them all and remember these words and recite them in your salah I would say again Rabbirham huma kama rabbayani saghira Rabbirham huma kama rabbayani saghira Rabbirham huma kama rabbayani saghira and for all whose parents have departed Allahumma ghfir lahum Allahumma ghfir lahum Allahumma ghfir lahum warhamhum warhamhum wa afihim wa afihim wa afihim wa akrim nuzulahum wa akrim nuzulahum wa akrim nuzulahum Allahumma hasibhum hisab yasira Allahumma hasibhum hisab yasira Allahumma hasibhum hisab yasira Allahumma adkhilhum jannata ma'al abrar Allahumma adkhilhum jannata ma'al abrar Allahumma adkhilhum jannata ma'al abrar Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alayna innaka antat tawwabur rahim Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahhab subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin inshallah tomorrow we will uh, continue the discussion of verse number 36 of surah an-nisa and we will be talking about wa bifil qurba the relations of kin wal yatama wal masakin the orphans and the poor and the needy so the under privileged class of the society and our relatives and relations of kin this inshallah again is a very important topic and i would uh, request all of you to advise to invite as many as you can to come and watch our lecture live or uh, i would also request all of you to share the lecture of uh, today uh, of bil walidayni ihsana with as many as you can so that you can help people relate the rights of their parents in today's society as people are really children are really uh, mistreating and being very ill tempered to their parents so uh, if you want your children to be obedient to you and you want your daughter-in-laws and your son-in-laws and you yourself want to be uh, doing the same then uh, obviously you can share the lectures which are coming to you uh, in your on your whatsapp groups and as well on your profiles and the purpose of all 
this when I request you is to help us spread the teachings of Islam. Zakallahu khairun kasira fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.